What's up guys, we are back with another McFarlane review, taking a look at a figure that, I don't know why I bought this. It's new, I'm curious, and that's pretty much what it is. I don't know if I actually care about this figure or not, but there's a little bit of nostalgia for old Spawn stuff. Despite the fact that I didn't really buy a lot of this when I was younger, I still get nostalgic for some of these more ridiculous designs. And we are taking a look at the gold label, whatever that means, uh, Mandarin Spawn. So this is the Walmart exclusive, the blue one, the red one will be sort of a regular release. And then we've got this guy at Walmart. So we've got him here in, I don't know, kind of a standard but snazzy package. So you've got gold foil for the gold label on it figure in the big window. You've got a red sort of Mandarin Chinese motif design for uh, the outer sleeve. And then you've got the Spawn logo down there at the bottom. And then the back of the box has got a massive product shot for Mandarin Spawn and the Spawn logo up there. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our gold label Mandarin Spawn. This guy is is kind of cool, but he's also, I don't know, kind of not. He is in many ways a really nice looking action figure, but there's also a few things about him that just sort of leave me scratching my head. Like McFarlane could have done just one or two things differently and he would be so much more of a quote unquote action figure. Because uh, this guy isn't, you know, necessarily old school McFarlane, just sort of a statue kind of thing. But there's also a few real big hang ups when it comes to moving him around that just, I don't know, they could have done one thing and it would have been a whole lot better. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. You've got a head that, for starters, is very locked down and it's, it's all because of the sculpt. So he can't really do anything up or down. It's basically just a little bob action. You've got a little tilt side to side and then you do have full rotation, but it only goes so far before it starts to get really, really weird. Like that's not a normal look. So he goes about, you know, this far, as far as actual looking before you're basically just twisting the head because you can, which doesn't work. Uh, arms go out at the shoulder but they only go about this far. I have actually popped the arm out of the socket by trying to uh, to do it too hard, so be careful. It's just a ball peg, but you know you, your mileage may vary on that. There is a little butterfly joint in there. It doesn't really do a whole lot though. There is surprisingly a bicep swivel here. Uh, I didn't think there was at first, but it really only goes this far because of the shoulder armor. So it allows you to rotate the arm a little bit, uh, but not, not a full rotation or anything. You've got what is really weird at the elbows. You've got a ball hinge at the elbow, and it, it's it's a 90 degree bend, so he goes that far. And what's really weird is that there are actually faces sculpted, in, sculpted into the outside of the joints, which is just odd. It's an odd thing. It's just another little detail that they threw in there. It's kind of cool, but it's kind of weird. And that allows for uh, rotation as well. And then you've got your uh, ball hinges at the wrist as well. And those also have uh, have the faces on on one side as well. You've got a torso cut here that will, will allow in conjunction with the ball peg at the waist to go back about this far, maybe a little bit further, push him. And then he goes forward about this far. You've got really, really good tilt side to side. And then there is a torso cut up here. There's also a waist twist. It's kind of hard to use, but once you get him, I mean, he can go fully all the way around using both of those cuts at the waist and then at the torso. Legs is where is where I have my problems with this guy though. So the head is kind of locked down. That's, that's to be expected. But the legs have some of those telltale McFarlane things that he just won't seemingly do on most figures that would have fixed this one. So the legs only go out this far. They do not really kick forward at all. And if you push them too hard, you are gonna pop those legs out. It's just a ball peg. They do not move back much further than this, which is honestly further than they go forward. And there is zero twist here. Uh, there is no thigh cut, of course, and there really could have been. I mean, the lines are actually sculpted and you could have just cut right through those and you know someone's gonna do it and they're gonna show us how well this can work but there is no real shimmy or twist at the thigh and it really hurts this figure in, in my opinion you've got a double jointed knee but he's got this spike right here that stops him from going back any further but it is probably good enough i'm not really worried about that i will say that the legs are they're kind of loose they're not like super, super loose, but they are kind of loose. I mean, I guess I guess they're looser than I thought now. And then this right knee is already loose out of the box. The left one, well, your right, is, is fine, but this one uh, is not. We've got rocker, which is really weird. It's almost more like rotation than anything else at the ankle. But because of the fact that he's like this digitigrade with these really weird feet, it is a rocker, but it works more like a, like a, a rotation. And then he's got these crazy ankles. So they go all the way back like that. And then you've got 
a, a ratchet up front that allows them to go up about this far. So the angles are actually pretty good. It's kind of weird. I thought I broke it at first, but I didn't. Uh, so you've got some crazy, crazy ankle articulation, although I'm not sure how much that is actually usable. Uh, so he is... He is articulated, but he does have some weird choices. I mean, the elbows are are odd because they're only 90 degrees, and they could have definitely been a much higher degree than that. Shoulders are limited, the head is limited, the hips are limited, and, uh, you know, you've got really good range at the torso, though, and then you've got really good range at the ankles. So it's kind of a, a give and take on this figure. He is a uh, kind of victim of his own design, I suppose, which isn't to be unexpected in this figure. I was really curious to see what was going to happen because he is really weird. But then, of course, I am slightly, I guess I'm more concerned now than I was before about this because he was not this bad uh, when I first got him out of the box. I should, I should probably stop doing that. Where this figure really shines for me, though, is likely the area that Todd himself mostly cares about. It's the sculpt and the overall design. And I'll say again that, you know, I didn't really buy into these toys when I was younger. You know, whatever these came out, late 90s and, and early-ish 2000s, I didn't didn't really care about Spawn figures. I bought plenty of McFarlane stuff, but it wasn't Spawn related for the most part. I never have had a Mandarin Spawn until now, so I don't have any of those to compare against, and I don't really have any to look at to see what is or isn't different between the old I don't want to say vintage, but older figures and this new guy. I will say, though, that he looks very similar. There are a lot of takeaways from those older figures that have been put into this figure, but at the outset, he is definitely not as detailed as those older figures. We all know that old McFarlane figures were crazily sculpted, overly painted in many ways, and this guy is not that. Uh, the biggest culprit is the fact that they didn't really do anything on the back of the figure, which normally I don't care about, and I really don't care about here because I don't know about you, but I do not display my figures from the back, so it's not a huge deal for me, but of course it does bear mentioning. I do think, though, that the overall sculpt on this figure is incredibly well done. Uh, it looks fantastic. There is tons of little detail everywhere, you know, from all of like these heads on the armor. So you've got this big sort of dragon skull over here, the big asymmetrical design with these crazy spikes, the uh, sort of, you know, Japanese style masks that are on his uh, on his arms. Even the faces, again, that are sculpted into these joints are really, really weird, unnecessary things that I do find very interesting and very cool. The asymmetrical design as far as uh, these knee pads, they look fantastic. The sculpt is different. The sculpt is really well done. Even down to the shin guards, they're very different as well. There is a lot of unpainted detail on this figure, though. Do I personally care about it? I'm not really sure that I do, but taking into consideration the fact that we got a figure, you know, 20 years ago that looked far more painted than this, I know that someone is going to complain about it. Uh, I don't know that it truly bothers me, but at the same time, I'm really curious to see what this guy would look like in the hands of somebody who could mimic that original figure just to bring out all of this sculpt. Because you know that all of these like little jagged lines in the legs, those would be filled in with paint. This skull would be covered in paint, stuff like that. There would be a lot more ornate detail on uh, this sort of uh, skirt piece here, but there is a lot of detail to begin with. So all of this dragon looks really good. It has a nice uh, sort of pewter look, but then there's also a metallic silver dry brushing over a lot of the armor. There's a lot of this sort of jade coloring, and then even just the general sculpt for this dull gray stuff looks really good. That skull in the middle is really well sculpted. So there is a lot going on with this figure from a design perspective and from a sculpt perspective. And I think, you know, for your average uh, toy buyer and toy collector, they're going to be happy with this. There's likely going to be some folks that, that likely want to see more or see what could have been because there is, for as much sculpt as there is painted on this guy, there is just as much that has been left unpainted. And your mileage may vary on whether you care or not about that. I do think that at the end of the day, he still does look uh, really cool. The face, the head sculpt on this guy is really wild. They didn't really uh, spare any expense, I suppose, when it comes to painting this. There is a lot of detail all up in there. Uh, the teeth are really well done. The Spawn logo, as goofy as it kind of looks on the, on the figure like this, because it does sort of stick out like a sore thumb, it's really well painted, very clean and crisp. And the overall design from that original Mandarin Spawn translates really, really well into this figure, uh, especially up with the head sculpt. He looks very menacing, very nasty, and overall has a lot of detail crammed into a relatively small space when it comes to how big this figure is. Now, as far as comparisons go, 
I figured the best way to start is to start by looking at other Spawn figures, well, at least the ones that I have available, and that means we're talking about new current McFarlane Spawn figures. So we've got the, the regular Spawn here, and then we've got the bloody variant, whatever whatever this one was called. I cannot remember at this point, but the white one. And uh, you can see that just as far as overall design goes, they couldn't look any, any, any more dissimilar from each other. There's really nothing to compare to, but it does give you an idea of uh, exactly how big this guy is, because he's kind of thin and wispy, but at the same time, he is uh, is quite a bit larger. He is uh, about a head taller than your average spawned figure right now. So he does have some good height on him in comparison to these other guys. And then for some other lines, let's move these guys away. And we will do, I don't know, here's a NECA movie turtle. So here is uh, Donnie. And then how about a Black Series? So there's our Beskar Mando to give you an idea of what they look like with another 7-inch scale figure, but of course not a 7-inch figure, and then a 6-inch scale figure. And then let's take them away and throw in, I don't know, why not? Because they're everything to me right now. A Plunderling for a smaller figure. And then for an actual 7-inch figure, here is the Filmation He-Man. This is the Mattel version, not the Super 7 version, but they are the same height, same figure, basically. So you get an idea of what he looks like with a smaller figure and then an actual 7-inch figure that is not another McFarlane. Now, as far as accessories goes, Spawn has a, a pretty decent set. It's not a lot in terms of quantity, but I think he's got two really cool weapons. So to start with, you've got uh, this sort of like, uh, sort of like a glaive or like a guandao uh, type of weapon. So, you know, kind of like a big pole arm spear type of thing. And it doesn't have really much, well, any paint on it as far as detail goes. So you've got this big, massive gold blade here. It's got the spawn logo in there, a bunch of inlaid detail. And then of course the design on the, on the weapon itself is really cool. And then you've got this long uh, blue handle here, which has a decent bit of sculpting, but it doesn't have any paint on it. It is kind of flexible. It's not like bendy bendy but it's not rigid either and then you've got this uh, shorter weapon here which is you know kind of like another style of glaive or a massive sword in some ways which has a lot of etching all over it there's this big dragon that's inlaid there and then you've even got this big uh, sort of dragon mouth spewing out the blade itself and it does have a little bit of paint as far as like this flourish down here at the end the sculpt on these things is really nice though like i really do like the way they look and he holds them uh, pretty well no issues they're not too heavy or anything like that and then as usual you know kind of per the norm for mcfarland stuff we do get a base for this guy and unlike the first spawn figure i did not throw this one out by mistake so we've got it here black base with a little peg on it and a spawns logo down there so not a great deal of stuff but i do think he has a, a couple of really cool accessories uh, regardless. So overall, I like a lot of things about this guy, but I also dislike a lot of things about him. Most of my complaints really lie with articulation because there are a lot of things that are locked down on him. The shoulders are locked down, the head is locked down, the elbows could have more range, but for some reason they don't on this figure. The hips, thigh area are super locked down and they make for some odd posing with this figure. My figure does, of course, seem to have some very uh, loose legs, but I know that that's not unique to this figure so far. I'm just not sure how bad mine is by comparison. Otherwise, I think he looks really good, and I did, of course, harp on the fact that he seems to have a lot of unpainted areas, but for me, I'm not too hung up on that, personally. I know that I would also love to see what could have been, but for a figure at this price point, I think we got a lot when it comes to sculpt and paint. They really did a good job translating this figure into this new line that they're working on. He does come with a couple of really solid accessories too, and he's got some nice size overall. It's a tall figure. It's not a small figure by any means. So he is a fun figure, but he's not necessarily the greatest Spawn figure either. So that's going to do it for this look at the Walmart exclusive gold label Mandarin Spawn. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.